pleasure to be here at Leuven, which I have come to love on my three trips here. And I can't thank you enough for this wonderful invitation. As the great British and American philosopher Stuart Hampshire said, the skillful management of conflict is among the highest of human skills. And as you've heard in the dialogue from my wonderful promoters, Alain and Martin, we do that best by talking to each other. Consider how we used to decide and resolve disputes. Trial by battle, by ordeal. If we were right, we had hot stones put in our hands, or we were thrown into a lake, or we were put on a horse with another horse on the other side. And if God thought we were right, we would survive. That trial by ordeal was succeeded in the late Middle Ages, both on the continent and in the United Kingdom, with the notion of a trial by evidence, to hear facts and proof presented to a jury. In the early days, juries actually consisted of the same community of the people who had the dispute in the first place. And that jury would hear the facts and the evidence, and they would decide that someone was right and someone was wrong. And so our evidence scholars attempted to study what is the best way to get at the truth. I want to suggest to you that in modern times, the truth is only one of the values that a dispute resolution system should have. I'm not saying we don't need it sometimes. Sometimes there's a right. And certainly as a legal ethicist, I would say to you, we need to have a moral compass. We need to know what is right. We need to know what is wrong. But the truth is not often so singular anymore in our modern globalized society. So imagine that we would have institutions of conflict resolution that would acknowledge many truths. Perhaps the way we find truth, the way we find right, and more importantly, the way we find peace and justice together may be evolving from the old system of trial by evidence. And that is where mediation comes in. In the early 80s, there was a group of us, hopeful, I like to say pragmatically optimistic about the world, who decided that perhaps rather than arguing cases and law and positions and making demands against each other, by looking at interests behind those positions, we would learn that interests could be complementary and not necessarily always conflicting. I spoke a moment ago of Stuart Hampshire, a moral philosopher who spent his life trying to understand what the good was for a human being. Stuart Hampshire said, the great beauty of dispute resolution in the world, and he was very culturally focused on Anglo-American adversarialism, he said, hear the other side, audi alterum partum, to which I have added, as Alain has alluded, hear all other sides. So in my early work on negotiation, I coined a phrase, I spoke of it this morning, the limited remedial imagination of courts or judges. I don't like to insult judges. I'm an arbitrator, so I judge. I don't mean to say that judges don't have imaginations, but they are restricted by the law, which we need for order, in what remedies they can grant. And our trials are more focused on establishing the truth of the past than to look at what might be best for the future. Thomas Jefferson said he thought every constitution should be revised every 30 years, the lifetime of a man. And it was a man in those days. He said a constitution can only work for a generation. 
Even then, in 1789, he knew that things would change and that perhaps the basic rules and the basic constitutive elements of our basic values should be reconsidered. That is a mediative idea. We make an agreement today with the hope that it will solve our problems, but we look to the future in trying to provide some methods for amendment and for trying to figure out how we might best recraft a new solution when the facts on the ground change. I now work a little bit in a region of the world, the Middle East, in which there is no peace, and a very brave group of people called the Parent Circle, representing Israelis and Palestinians who have lost members of their families in the conflict. A small group of those people have chosen to look for reconciliation processes even before there's peace. That is a new architecture of dispute resolution. The present presents us with some very interesting dilemmas. Can we scale mediation up outside of the room of two disputants and one mediator to solve some of the larger social problems that we're facing, political problems, legal problems? I believe that it can. And so by scaling up mediation to try to resolve disputes and manage disputes, and more importantly, productively handle disputes, even if they're not totally resolved, I look forward to a future in which our legal arch architecture will include more direct dialogue and very different physical spaces from which I hope we will all make a better world than we live in now.